You're listening to the Talk of the Tribe, Wapsie Valley Warrior Podcast, brought to you by Little Wapsie Communications. Their state-of-the-art fiber network is complete in Fairbank, ready to serve your home or business with the fastest internet in town. Foreign Mutual Telephone Company. Serving the area since 1911, Foreign Mutual is a modern, independently-owned telephone company providing internet and telephone services to Orin, Iowa, and the surrounding rural area. RTC Communications. They are here to provide high-quality, superior service to you, the customer, by offering great customer service and the services you want and need to work and stay connected with family and friends. This is the Talk of the Tribe podcast, coming to you from the center of warrior country. Here are your hosts, Zach Favors and Riker Oberly. All righty, welcome to episode 29 of the Talk of the Tribe podcast. I'm your host, Zach Favors, joined today by my co-host, Riker Oberly. And uh, we are here today. Let's give a shout out to all of our sponsors, Little Ops Communications or Mutual Telephone Company. RTC Communications, and the What Is Up podcast, hosted by Fairbanks' very own Bubba Seaman. Shout out to him. He does a great job. Go get his merch. He's got shirts, hats, sweatshirts, all of the above. And uh, we're here. Episode 29. We're back. We're uh, double upload today, or so I guess triple upload here on a, on this beautiful Saturday morning. Um, and uh, Riker, it's been, a, it's been a morning, hasn't it? <laughs> sure something. Yeah, so... This is kind of the episode where we're going to talk about kind of wopsy related stuff, but it isn't really it's sports fun. related. Um, we'll just we'll say that um, it's different from what we usually do, um, and I say that mainly because of the fact that um, you know we're talking about wopsy valley stuff, but it just really isn't sports related. And that's kind of what we are. We're a sports podcast at the end of the day. Um, but we do talk about a lot of the school stuff that happens around here. That's what we're going to talk about today. First off, the big thing that's been happening over the last week or so, the dodgeball tournament here at Washington Oh, Valley. baby. It was live streamed on the uh, the uh, the good old Wapsie Valley Athletics page. And um, I, I'd i have to say, um, it didn't go well for us. Okay. <laughs> that's... Well, okay. I... <laughs> we we didn't play anybody good, Riker. Okay. Okay. We didn't we didn't play bad against any of them either. It's not, that's true. You can talk. You talk about the dodgeball tournament for a minute. Give the overview of the dodgeball. I gotta finish this, right. uh, this episode. Two pools, right? Two pools. Eight teams. The Beach Boys, consisting of uh, the freshmen, right? There's eight eight players per team. The freshmen. We don't have rosters, unfortunately. Got getting dirty. Or sorry, Beach Boys went two and zero. Oh, pool A, getting dirty, bunch of seniors. They played three pool play games. And went two and one. Yeah, you said two and zero. Oh. Really? Yeah. Oh, Beach Boys went two and one in pool play, getting dirty, bunch of seniors went two and one in pool play. Night Howlers, the defending champions, went two and one in pool play. The Skibbity Toilets from Ohio, best name by the way, went zero oh and three in pool play. Pool B. Adam Sandler's clones went one and two. The Dream Team went two and one. Skills That Kills went zero oh and three. And Hoagies Heroes. Meet- Hogan's. Okay, Hoagies is better. Whatever. Hogan's Heroes went three and zero. Oh. So hitting in the bracket play, the number one seed was Hoagies Heroes. Number two seed was. Does it not say? Oh, sorry. Number two seed was Getting Dirty. Number three seed was Dream Team. Number four team was the Night Howlers. Number five team was the Beach Boys. Number six team was the Adam Sandler Clone. Or, sorry, the number six team, or seven team, was the Scooby Toilets from Ohio. And the number eight team was the Adam, or the Adam Sandler Clones. So, yeah, and uh, we, uh, Riker and I were both on the uh, Hogan's Heroes dodgeball team. We ended up getting the one seed to a uh, a lot of people's dismay because, to be fair, and this is no offense to anybody else in our pool, our pool was definitely not the best. It was definitely the worst of the two. I don't know how we got put in the pool, but we got put in that pool. And obviously, if any of the other teams from the from the better pool or the top pool were put into this pool, they probably would have done the same thing, gone three and zero. And uh, we were the only undefeated team in pool play, so we got the one seed. 
Uh, we ended up playing the skills that kills. the seventh graders and Decker, as I like to call them, because they're not really skills that kill. It's kind of just Decker. It's Sevies and Decker. Um, and I guess for that game, Sevies, Decker, and Wally, um, <laughs> because Wally was on that team. Wally got out in like the first like two, two minutes, seconds. just two two, two three minutes of the game. Yeah, good job, Wally. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, bracket play, Hogan's Heroes versus Skills That Kills. First game in the got bracket the, play. Got the win. Hogan's Heroes wins pretty pretty dominantly. Pretty, pretty easily, I'll say. Second game was the Beach Boys versus the Nighthouse. Beach Boys pull up a 5-4 upset. And now we go head on to the Dream Team versus Adam Sandler Clone. Dream Team coming in as a three team. Adam Sandler Clone as the sixth seed. Adam Sandler Clone pulls up an upset against the Dream Team. <laughs> The Skibbity Toilet from Ohio versus Getting Dirty. Getting Dirty has the two seed, takes the dub. Now, he added to the semifinals. So the semifinals were set up to be one versus five and two versus six, correct? Yes. Surprised they actually got that right. Um, but anyways, though we'll start with the two versus six. Ike going up against, it was pretty much just Ike. Uh, going up against the seniors, and although Ike was able to to make some noise, the uh, the seniors ended up pulling off the uh, the win there. But the upset was the five over the one, um, which was the Beach Boys over uh, Hogan's Heroes. Okay, yep. And this, I will say, this, I I did not like our walkout choice. I think that ruled us from the start. We walked out to Real American. If you didn't, if you don't know what that song is, just look up Hulk Hogan's WWE entrance theme. Yeah, it's Real American. I think we should have walked out to the Hogan's Heroes uh, theme, like the TV show. Then again, I don't think anybody anybody would have got that reference. I think we should have walked out to the backyard again because that's the most dominant song that there's <laughs> ever been. See, if I had to pick, I would have probably walked out to uh, Hell's Bells by ACDC. Hex uh, Bells for this podcast. Yeah, Hex Bells, for, Hex Bells. <laughs> for this podcast. Um, that song is... Uh, Good, good song, really good song. But um, yeah, Hoka Tiros. It started off really, really well. It did. <laughs> we we got three people out first like minute. While we got out in like the first ten seconds. Shout out to him again, <laughs> Gavin Henry, and I think it was Cooper there. All three of them are out. We we're like, oh my god, how is this happening? And then we noticed Briar Bellis, Landon Molds, and Cannon Dana are starting the game. Yep, and then everything went down from there. I got Briar Bellis out. Um, towards the late middle, later part of that game. So it was down to Molds, Dana, and Andrew Whaling versus myself, Caleb Hogan, Riker Oberly, James May, and... Um, Kylex Knight. Kyle, no, Kylex wasn't on our team oh, that really? game. Oh. No, I think that was just it. Maybe Sawyer was in there. But uh, Sawyer got out, then James got out. Which, by the way, we have video evidence that James did not get out. Because really? they hit the dodgeball, yeah. We, <laughs> James sent a video to Caleb the next day. And you could clearly see it bounce off the dodgeball. But I'm not here to stir up media speculation and start rumors. But anyways, um, so then Caleb gets out uh, a little later. And then I think either you or I got I, molds. You I got, got molds. molds. Okay, got molds. you got molds. And then I think I... I think uh, I got molds like four times, but... Yeah, and then we also got Dana about six times, and then you finally hit him in the... Uh, yeah, Right in the place where you... The sun, the sun shone. The sun don't shine. Right in the place <laughs> where you can't not feel it. Yeah, and then Dana walked off. So now it was it was a one on two. I don't know if walked off. I think he crawled off. Yeah, <laughs> I don't I don't know how we ended up losing this game because it was a two on one. It was me and you versus Andrew, and I I should have backpedaled really hard. Instead, I kind of just stood there and got smoked in the nose. Yeah, that was not great. Um, <laughs> if you didn't know, we used the ball the balls that curve. Oh yeah, like, like they curve, they so curve so much, and that ball was gonna miss me by about a foot, and then it just you know, like it curled back and really hit me in the nose. <laughs> you you can't aim those things. So then, and then Riker in the uh, we'll just call it the fumble of all fumbles. Andrew okay. Whaling is laying on his back, and Riker is standing at the baseline, not rushing him. I'm like, dude, just go after him, like just run at him. I was watching you throw the balls into the ground. Oh, After you got out, I was so mad. I and it didn't I ran help. up, and then I realized that Andrew is athletic and fast. Yeah. So I just, <laughs> so I decided to not go up. Yeah. And, and then Andrew just pressured you and got you out. And then we lost, and it, we we should have won that game. If but, I wasn't wearing Air Forces and I had my Crocs on, I guarantee that does not hit. You me didn't wear your Crocs? Crocs? How dare you? I know. 
How I dare know. you it not was, wear the Crocs? I know we were four and zero in the Crocs, and I decided it was. I think yeah, I think I. It was a Croc. But now we head on to the championship game. Beach Boys getting dirty. This is the greatest, one of the greatest. Best out games. of three. You know, you could already <laughs> tell everybody just wants to get dirty to win. I, everybody wanted to get dirty to win, including the, myself. Because the Beach Boys were, oh were my talking. God, I do not like them. They were chatting, <laughs> which I so Kentucky. I was not super bummed about uh, losing to the Beach Boys in the semifinals. Because I really, really did not want Tucker Latterberg throwing a dodgeball ninety miles. That an hour is out true. That face. that's scary. <laughs> that's not fun. That is exactly how Tyler Shore got out. Is when Tucker Latterberg like hit him in the face, really, yeah. really hard. Yeah, and then um, you know Tyler got smoked, and then you know it was just an entourage of getting dirty fastballs. But it was for first round best. First out of was the Beach Boys. They really showed up in that game and really took it to uh, get dirty. That was when I was like, oh, they might take this in, in two. It might not we might yep. not even have a third game. And then Cooper told me this. He goes, he so the the second game started off a little slow. Yep. And getting uh the Beach Boys were backs against the wall. Like they were not moving. They were the ultimate wuss move of just standing in the back wall as far away from Tucker Latterberg and Ian okay, that's, as possible. That's not a wuss move <laughs> when it's a smart move. That's true. It is a smart move, but all respect to the Beach Boys now. I'm glad you guys won against us. Yeah. I'm glad you guys lost against getting dirty though. That is true. Um but yeah, he's, Tyler got smoked, and then Cooper got out. And Cooper told me the second he got out, he thought everything was going to be okay because getting dirty already had two people out. And then all of a sudden, in like 10 seconds, everybody on the Beach Boys just started getting out. It like, was like, literally bam, everybody. Bam, yeah, bam, 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 bam. bam. Nuts. <laughs> like four or five people got out in the span of like 10 seconds. And then getting dirty just cleaned up house to finish out that second game and got it done. And then in the third game, it was kind of more of the same. Just... Five or okay, six I Beach think, Boys getting out was, in like 10 seconds? I think it was three on three at, in the last round at one point. I think I think it was Briar, Molds, and Lane versus Tucker, Trey, and... No, it was Briar, Molds, and Dana. Yep, Briar, Molds, and Dana. That sounds right. Because Lane, Lane and Gavin got out like right away almost every time. And then it was Tucker, Tucker, Trey, and, and I think Gary Miller. Gary yeah. Miller, yep. It was, I don't think Tucker like ever got out. I don't think he did. He obviously either. got out in the first game because yeah. uh, they yeah. lost. But um, yeah, it was, it was crazy to to watch that game. And you had it was absolutely chaotic. Want to know what's crazy? You Blake was running on the court <laughs> to tell Dana because Dana wouldn't get out. And I swear, Dana will get hit eight times and then con- he could get drilled in the chest and then continuously say he didn't get out. It took Blake and Mr. Adams running on the court to get Dana to walk off. Yep. <laughs> like, Dana just wouldn't, he just, he just complained. He wouldn't give up. And Mr. Davies' quote at the beginning was so true. <laughs> Leads the leads the tournament in whining, complaining. The Beach Boys, yeah, no duh. <laughs> Obviously, I don't have much room to talk because I probably complained a little bit as well. But shout out Wally. Yeah, good good job, Wally. But uh, Wally, the ball's five feet that way. Wally's like, so, you're out, you're out. I'm like, no, Wally, sit out. Shut up, dude. It's three. <laughs> it's three on three. You got Tucker Ladderberg, Trayton Sabri, Garrett Miller versus Kaden Dana, Landon Moles, and Briar Bellis. Probably the six most dominant people in this tournament. And that's where you wonder, what's going to happen? And then Tucker Latterberg just nails Landon Moulds in the chest. Oh my god, that was Bounces such off. a loud thud. <laughs> I know. And then like everybody knew, this this is it. Then Trayton gets, gets I think, Briar in the thigh. Briar has, Briar has, you know, really, he has a lot of muscles. So, <laughs> it... it Hit him right in the thigh. And then it's, I think it was Dana. It Dana, was Dana yeah. that was the last one. And then it, it didn't take very long after mm-hmm. Briar Bellis. And then he got those three chucking balls that came Yeah, yeah, up. Tucker Latterberg just firing. No, I think Moles was last because Moles got drilled in the chest to end it. Really? Yeah. I got out Dana, first. it was Dana, and then it, it was, was Bellis. I think it was Bellis, and it was Dana, and then it was Moles to, uh, to end it. But yeah, getting dirty eventually won. Everybody's happy. Besides the Beach Boys, of course. I think they're proud of themselves. I think they should be proud of themselves. See, here's what, here's my like one issue with we this. We got third, by the way. Yeah, we got third. We ended up beating the Adam Sandler clones to get third. But anyways, that game really didn't matter. That was kind of a... Yeah. It was kind of a... Uh, we don't care. 
But because uh, I really didn't care, I, wa- I was time. I walked back and got drilled. I was just like, you know what? Or I got like I think I got hit in the ankle or something. And I was like, I don't even care. <laughs> but um, anyways, that the one thing I do have to say is I don't know why people like I get it. Why are we the villains of everything? Like people were rooting for the Beach Boys of all people. Like they had the better athletes. We'll just say that. I'm not. I'm here. I'm here to say. I'm it's not all the because best. they had molds. Everyone I'm not, loves molds. I'm not the best athlete. In fact, I'm probably not even a great athlete yet. Um, we were still getting booed out of the building. <laughs> like we were getting booed so much, <laughs> and I don't think. And I think. Most people would say the game against us and the Beach Boys, they were rooting for like both of us to lose. Like, is that possible? Can like both teams lose at the same time? Is just that waste, possible? <laughs> just run out of time, they tie. Yeah, it's like same amount of players left. It's a draw. It's just now now we just move on to the other game. That's the championship game. Cause like it, nobody wanted anybody to win that. <laughs> I will say Trip Gistler really wanted the Skibbity Toilets from Ohio to win. And <laughs> They, well, he was rooting for Tucker in the last game. Well, yeah. It, Trip Gissel has got to be the most hilarious person that I've ever met, ever. Because even when the Skibbity Toilets were out, he's still chanting their name. <laughs> <laughs> it, loud and proud. When it goes silent, you can hear Trip yelling. It's awesome. We love Trip. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so, I think, do we have anything else left on Dodgeball? Anything. You got to leave? Yeah. It's it's 11.45. Okay. Well, I'll finish this out for you, I guess. All right. See you, everyone. Have a yeah, nice bye. day. <laughs> We're 15 minutes in. Go Warriors. All right. Okay, Riker's done. out. Um, so, <laughs> bye, Riker. Okay. Riker's gone. Um, but anyways, so that's probably going to be the recap for Dodgeball. Um, I think your your champions are Team Getting Dirty, the seniors. Um, and then your runner-up is the Beach Boys, and then your third place, the uh, the final spot on the podium goes to uh, the Hogan's Heroes. But um, I think the dodgeball tournament is one of the best things that we've come up with. Uh, obviously, February, pretty stale month outside of Valentine's Day, but really, is that even a real holiday? I don't know. Um, but I think it's one of the best things that our, our student council or whoever uh, does that, whoever like came up with the idea for it has done, is you know do that. Uh, dodgeball tournament because it gives like people a chance to have some fun and in a in a good way throughout the school day and uh, obviously we still go to classes throughout the day because we still have our normal schedule it's just there's a little bit of time left in there for some dodgeball and uh, everybody loves dodgeball it's one of the best PE games of all time so you know maybe the greatest PE game of all time <laughs> is dodgeball so to have some fun, it's great. Uh, obviously, there's like a buy-in. You have to pay ten bucks per player to get in. You create your own team of eight players, and then uh, it's uh, for. It depends on how many teams are in the tournament, but then you play some round robin pool play. You're guaranteed like three to four, maybe even five games if you're if you're good enough, and uh, you get to have some fun, play some dodgeball. So, moving on, uh, we have FFA stuff to talk about, I guess. Um, I guess uh, sub district contests are in like a week, two weeks maybe. I know I'm doing creed speaking. Uh, our freshman class is doing chapter quiz or not chapter quiz, green hand quiz. Uh, there's conducts, conduct of meetings. We had our FFA sweetheart king and queen crowning. Uh, we had a lot of stuff going on in the in the FFA chapter. Just a lot. We'll break it down. We'll start off with sweetheart king and queen. I believe this year was Dallas Tissue and Natalie Gray. So congrats to them. Um, they, uh, gonna take the reins from, I believe, Kylie Stratman and, uh, Andrew Mathias, so, congratulations to them. Con, uh, contest-wise, there's a lot of contests in FFA. You have, uh, parliamentary procedure, conduct of meetings, ag broadcasting, job interview, chapter website, FFA creed speaking, um... There's so many. I can't even think of half of them because there's just so many. There's like a whole big list of them in uh, in the uh, the um, ag classroom. That was what I was going to say, the ag room. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on there. Obviously, musicals underway now. Uh, that's where I was Thursday. I wasn't able to do the broadcast Thursday night, the boys' basketball game, because I was uh, – it was – at musical practice, yeah, I'll say it. Uh, the musical this year is uh, The Adams Family. Um, so that'll be interesting. The musical, I believe, is April 
12th, 13th, and 14th, I think, I believe. Might be wrong on that. I don't know. Um, yeah, it, 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 there's a lot of stuff happening. Um, so I guess we'll, we'll circle back to FFA quick. Contest. I've said it enough. How this works is you have a sub-district level contest. If you do well enough, you go to districts. If you do well enough at districts, you go to state. If you do well enough at state, you go to nationals. And uh, it continuously goes up. So sub-districts this year, I believe, is at Hawkeye Community College. Districts this year is, I have no idea, but it circulates. Uh, the My eighth grade year, I believe, uh, it was at um, Decorah High School. Um, and then state convention is in Ames at Jack, or not, not Jack Trice Stadium, uh, Hilton, uh, Hilton Coliseum, I believe. Maybe that's right. I know it's at Hilton. Um, man, I am struggling today. <laughs> um, I'm gonna look this up, make sure I, I get this. It is Hilton Coliseum. Okay, I was making sure. <laughs> um, I had to make sure. Um, and then National Convention is in Indianapolis at uh, Lucas Oil Stadium, one of the, where the Indianapolis Colts uh, play in the National Football League. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, one final thing. This could be a little bit of a shorter episode. I really didn't have much to talk about. Plus, Riker's not here for like the last 10 minutes. So um, Super Bowl. Super Bowl is tomorrow. Uh, we're recording this on a Saturday. I uh, already did screen time in episode 27 and episode 28. I'll do another day, probably from, like, Friday or something. But, um, Super Bowl. I My Super Bowl pick, I have the Chiefs winning. Um, yeah, I know, not a popular pick. But I'm in a contest for, like, our football team, our high school football team, and uh, we had a contest for that. I'm, I picked the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl. And I picked the uh, the total score, for, so the uh, combined score of both teams to be 59 points or more. So my prediction is probably going to be like, um, I think it was, I'll have to think about my score for a second. I think it was like, um, I think it was 31-28. I think I had it um, in favor of Kansas City. So hopefully for a, a good close game with the with the Chiefs winning. So. Hopefully that's how it works, and uh, I think Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl. I, I said it at the beginning of the playoffs, and uh, they're here now, so hopefully they win tomorrow night. So, I don't know. I'll probably have a, uh, a, a Q&A, like a questionnaire, in the uh, description of this episode asking who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl. Uh, we'll see how what you guys think, who you guys think is going to win the Super Bowl tomorrow. So, I think that's going to be all for us. Uh, Riker's not here, but he did co-host with me. He left his Gatorade here, too. What a... Just leaving things around. Um, <laughs> but anyways, until next time, I guess um, final final shout-out to our sponsors, RTC Communications, Little Wopsy Communications, or Mutual Telephone Company, and the What Is Up podcast, hosted by Fairbanks' very own Bubba Seaman. And until next time, Go Warriors! Go Warriors!